up everybody on YouTube thrift school over here and I am coming at you with a video pretty much talking to you guys I want to do a Q&A but I also want to tell you guys what I personally think is better selling on eBay selling on Amazon which one is more <laughs> which one is more seller friendly which one is more buyer friendly where do I personally sell 99.9 nah, not 99 90 like 90% I'd say 90% of my inventory now. I do want to spread out these puppies I have these beautiful pillows that need to be shown they're back there. That's my art that I got Okay, so when we talk about eBay versus Amazon, right? so I Sell on eBay and I sell on Amazon. I've been selling on both of these platforms for oh my golly I mean we're talking probably since 2014 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah, four years, probably 2014, maybe 2013, I don't know, I don't I don't really want to put that out there, because who knows, uh, you can go back on my channel, take a look at my previous videos, and actually watch through all of my videos, because I would love that, but uh, yeah, so basically, I've been selling on both of these platforms for a very, very, very long time, now, I can see how selling on eBay is beneficial, and I can see how selling on Amazon is beneficial, so I'm pretty well versed in this so when it comes to seller protection right when i'm talking about okay i'm a brand new seller where do i want to start do i want to start on ebay or do i want to start on amazon that's the question i get a lot and we are live right now so we're going to be getting some questions in the feed right now so if i answer some that's what's going on but i get a lot of people asking me are you selling uh, where did you start? Did you start on eBay or do you start selling on Amazon? And guys, I started on eBay just like most people I've ever talked to start on eBay, but I started very basically on eBay and then jumped right into Amazon. Didn't even bother with Merchant Fulfilled, hopped right into FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. So I shipped off packages to Amazon's warehouse and then they shipped it to the customer. So pretty much I started on eBay like most people, and then I hopped right over to Amazon. Now, why did I do this? There's a lot of reasons. I mean, to be completely honest, Amazon, you'll make more money, it takes less time, and it's much, much easier. You know, it's it's hard for me to say it's much, much easier to find more items for, but me personally, in my area, I'm in Connecticut, it is easier for me to find items for Amazon than eBay. Now, if you're focusing primarily on clothing, then eBay is going to be your gig. You can find so much no matter where you are in the country. I was in Texas recently, well, last summer, and I found enough clothing there to sell on eBay. I've been to multiple different states in New England, and it's always been perfectly fine for eBay for clothing. Connecticut, no exception. Perfectly fine for clothing. But I personally deal in hard goods. I know that's a little bit different it, than a lot of other resellers that you see here on YouTube. I pretty much focus primarily on hard goods. And a lot of people ask me in my comments, dude, I, I see you selling some clothing, but what, what happened with the clothing lately? I haven't put out a lot of videos. My sales reports don't have to do with a lot of clothing. Um, I haven't been listing a lot lately. Clothing sales have kind of slowed down, so I kind of back away from it. And I go back to what works, which is hard goods. And when I say hard goods, I'm talking about video games, media, uh, kitchen wares, uh, household goods, things like that. I pretty much honestly deal in that kind of stuff. I like working with hard goods. I find that you can get the bigger profit margin out of hard goods, especially on Amazon. So people tell me, or people ask me, aren't the fees higher on Amazon when you're selling, you know, as fulfilled by Amazon FBA? Well, yeah, they are. But the thing with Amazon um, FBA, you can price things higher. So if something sells, even if it sells for the same price, guys, listen to this, right? Something sells for $25 on eBay and something sells for $25 on Amazon. On Amazon, let's say they're taking out six bucks, right? Let's even say seven bucks. You're down to what is that? 18, 19, 18 bucks, right? 
Let's say you're down to $18 profit on Amazon. Well, on eBay, it's also selling for 25, but you have to pay for shipping and fees. So let's say shipping on this item is priority mail, whatever. That's going to be $6.90 for the flat rate bubble mailer. So you're talking about that $7 is right there and that's before fees. Now, when you ship off to Amazon, if you have a box of 30 plus items, shipping on each item is going to cost you 25 cents to 75 cents, somewhere around there, depending on where you're shipping. That is almost, that's pretty much negligible. I mean, you're really looking at the, you're, you're looking at the fees on Amazon as being insane, but pretty much you get to get rid of your shipping cost. Now, not every item on Amazon is like that. If you have a bigger item, like a, a VCR DVD combo, or like a, just a bigger item, a big board game or something like that, or even a big pair of shoes, sometimes they want you to ship one item per shipment. And that one item is going to cost you 5 to $8, right? So it's going to cost you the same as it would on eBay. But if you're shipping a lot of smalls, a lot of items that you know, weigh just over that pound mark, but can fit into a flat rate envelope or a padded flat rate envelope, Amazon is the way to go because all of a sudden that shipping cost is gone. So I've sold a lot of video games on Amazon over rather than eBay and also vice versa. It really depends. Um, a lot of video games you're able to get about five to seven bucks more on Amazon than eBay. That's great. Now let's say the exact same video game is going for the same price. Well, shipping on a video game is only about $2.50 to $3. Usually it's more worth it on eBay only because the fees are going to be much higher when it comes to Amazon. So that when the shipping is so low, those are the instances. But Amazon has gotten or eBay has gotten to the point with the USPS where shipping costs have kind of gone through the roof, guys. They've kind of gone through the roof, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Shipping costs have gone up an insane amount. And with it start, I remember when I first started reselling, it was well under $2 to ship a first class package under three ounces. You could ship one to three ounces for about a buck 90, something like that. And now it's almost up to $3. That it, it's starting to get to the point where the fees on Amazon aren't that bad because the sh and we have a we have a puppy right here Sophia she's hanging out with me right baby girl she's a great dog I love her so much and she's in my video she hasn't been in a video in a while I actually have a few videos I'm going to be editing and uploading soon guys I know these live videos are whatever but definitely we got some good videos coming up soon but basically those that's my stance on eBay versus Amazon they both have you know Amazon can be great for this eBay can be great for that. They both have their goods and their bads, their ups and their downs. But in reality, you know, I personally sell on Amazon more. I just do because of the time factor. I like to send my stuff off to Amazon, not have to deal with the customer. I don't have to deal with anything. And I, we have a great comment that just came in from Kim's Shop Nelson asking, what if you charge shipping on eBay? Now, with me personally, this is how I see it. This is how a lot of other people see it, but I just want to explain. People say, what if you just charge shipping? Why are you selling something for $30 when shipping is going to cost you $10 and you can charge $40, right? With me, if the going rate for something plus shipping is $30, I'm just going to charge $30 free shipping. Somebody can be charging. I look at the going rate for things. Let's say somebody, uh, and I know I watch a lot of Craigslist Hunter videos. I love his channel. And he says, well, I just charge shipping. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, I go off the going rate. So he sells a lot of old electronics, vintage electronics, right, guys? So let's say you have a big um, turntable, right? It sells for $75. Shipping is going to be $25, right? So you're at a hundred bucks. You can either price the item at $100 or at $75 plus $25 shipping. That's why whenever people say, don't you worry about shipping and Craigslist Hunter says, oh, I, I charge shipping. I don't worry. 
I personally don't worry either which way because I just price my items at $100 free shipping. It's the exact same if you price it at $75 plus $25 shipping. It's the exact same. So I don't see how people can say, well, I charge shipping for everything. I know um, another guy, um, Ronnie Hart. I love his channel. I love his stuff. He says he charges shipping for things. And I totally get it. It's totally cool. And um, I've, I've tried to charge shipping. I've done free shipping. I've done all these different things. But isn't charging shipping the exact same as doing free shipping with the total cost factored in? Except people just see free shipping and wouldn't they rather buy that than a cost plus the shipping? I personally think people are just going to choose the cheapest method. So I've been selling DVDs lately on eBay. And uh, there was this one DVD I was listing today, sells for $15. Now, I have about 50 cents into this DVD, 25 cents, probably less. So I don't mind what I sell it for. I can sell it for seven bucks and I can sell it for six bucks and still make a profit after shipping, you know, a buck or two. But um, so I see this person selling the item for $14.99 plus $3 shipping, right? So he's selling it for practically $18. So what I do is I sell the item for $17.95, free shipping. It's the exact same. So I don't I don't worry about shipping costs. I don't worry about anything like that. I, I pretty much just factor it all in. And yeah, some, uh, somebody's saying Sophie is a cutie. She's over here. She's resting her head against my leg and leaning it off the couch because she is just she's comfortable. Her whole body is contorted right now, as you can tell. So I'm going to start answering some questions because, you know, I talked about Amazon versus eBay and now I just want to go into the Q&A. Um, you guys know how I feel about it. I, I honestly, I personally like Amazon more than eBay, but I still sell on eBay an insane amount. Um, I list a lot of clothing on eBay. I love eBay for clothing and DVDs. Those are my two main things that I sell on eBay. Clothing, DVDs, done. I sell other things, but those are my two mains. If something isn't on Amazon, let's say I'm at the thrift store and I see something that looks quality, I scan it in with my Amazon seller app, it's not showing up on Amazon, I'll look it up on eBay. It could be a, a video game, it could be a toy, it could be anything, a plush. But all of a sudden I see it on eBay selling for 40 bucks, yeah, I'm gonna sell it on eBay. So that's kind of how I deal with that. So let's go into the Q&A guys, start shooting out questions uh, in the chat feed, I'm reading them right now. Um, thrifty 5050s vet says free shipping will get you if it has to be returned and not buyer's remorse you have to fork out for the return well it's it's still the same either which way and this is what i'm trying to explain to people so thrifty 50 vet uh thrifty 50 50 vet i, I want to just tell you if you sell something for 40 dollars uh, free shipping and it gets returned then technically you would pay five dollars for it to go out and then five dollars to have a ship back so you're out ten bucks now what if you sold it for thirty five dollars plus five dollars shipping well you the buyer paid the five dollars but if you did it for free shipping in the beginning you would have made that extra five dollars so the five dollars doesn't matter in the beginning and now when it gets returned, you're still paying the return shipping. So what I'm saying is I charge $5 more, which covers the shipping. And then when it gets returned, I still pay the shipping. It's the exact same thing. I personally just do free shipping because there's some buyers out there that look for free shipping for some reason. I sort everything on eBay by lowest price plus shipping. And there's other people out there that just sort by free shipping. There are, so I figure might as well kill two birds with one stone, price at the lowest, and also do free shipping. That's how I look at it. Um, I, I hope you understand what I'm getting at, but that's just how I do it. Um, just 10 Pacman says, also I order a ton of online arbitrage that was available when I tried to send it. Now it's not available. Yeah, so that's why I don't do online arbitrage at all, really. I do a little bit, but not a lot, because you got to be worried about things going out of stock and things like that, so um, that gets a little sketchy with me sometimes. Nightwing says, no, it's a mind mentality trick. They see 100 and get turned away, but if they see 75, they're more likely to look 
into it more than they are charging shipping. Yeah, so basically, it is a mind trick. So if you see $75, you might click on it, but then see the shipping and be deterred. But I just feel like, yeah, they might see $100. Yeah, it's $25 more than the $75 guy, but you don't have to add the price plus the shipping. It's just easier for a lot of simple-minded people. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, it just seems basic to me. Uh, do I teach her how to get started on Amazon? Teach who? Sophia? Um, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Do I scan books for Amazon? Very rarely. Recently, I just scanned a textbook that goes for over $80 profit. It's selling for a hundred and something, but it goes for $80 profit on Amazon. Insane. I love that so much. Uh, yeah, people are weird. How the brain works is crazy. Do me and my girlfriend live together? We do not. She's actually right over here. One second. What? One second. Okay. I will be right back. Give me one second. Oh my gosh, I'm live. Hi, Soph. I hope you guys really enjoyed Soph. To be, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I had to go pee really bad. So uh, if you guys can give me some thumbs up or some likes for that because I'm being completely honest and transparent with you. That would really help. I didn't want to leave this live stream. Um, I tried to figure something out, but it just didn't work. So I had to run. And uh, that's what happens during live streams sometimes. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, I thought I was good, but I wasn't. So let's just keep going on. Let's keep going through these comments. Thrifty 50 Vet, 50 50 Vet says, understand, but some items ship at 10 or 12. Depends on your item, I guess. No, I totally understand that, but the same goes for items that ship for $100. If something sell, if something is worth $200, I will list it at $200. Well, where people are charging shipping at $100 plus $100 shipping. It I feel like everything is worth what it's worth. I don't worry about shipping. If I think a bookshelf is going to cost me $700 to ship and it's only worth 100 bucks, I'm going to list it at $800 free shipping. That's how I'm going to do it. Either which way, I just think it's easier that way and that's the way I do it. I've done shipping costs. I've done calculated shipping. I don't really see a difference in what people pay for. Uh, they'll pay for what the item is worth. So uh, that's just kind of how I do it. Um, let's keep reading. Laura Ashleya says, when I get buyer's remorse return, I do not have to refund any shipping original or send back. I always charge shipping. I... I get that. I, uh, I've had some buyer remorse things happen and, um, I personally, you know, I charge a restocking fee on eBay. So I'll charge, I only charge 10%. So technically I'm losing out on my shipping cost. I could charge 15% or 20%, but I charge 10%. And, um, that's just kind of what works for me. You know, e every store is different, but that's just how I run things. I mean, it's just what happens. I don't get a lot of returns. I, I very accurately describe my item. Uh, Benji says, when I do free shipping, if the buyer's returns from remorse, you eat the initial shipping costs. If you charge shipping, you refund purchase price only. Okay, cool. So I, I see you guys are breaking it down for me. And that's actually interesting. I didn't know that. And that's kind of where the restocking fee for me comes in place. Now, you could also charge a restocking fee on top of the shipping cost, which would be perfectly good for you but um yeah no that that's good for returns I, I i honestly have nothing to argue about that i think that's a really 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 good idea personally i get maybe one return out of every i don't even know on ebay one return out of every 40 to 60 items probably like 50 items maybe 
Um, I don't get a lot of returns. I recently just got a return. I charged a restocking fee. They paid for return shipping. Um, and I have one more person that messaged me saying they want to return an item. And I said, okay, you can return it, but you have to pay for return shipping. And I charge a 10% restocking fee. And they said, okay. So that's kind of how I just do things. And it works for me. Technically, I could uh, save out by not by charging shipping, but I'm only losing a couple bucks here and there. This is just how I choose to do it. Everybody does it differently, and it totally makes sense. Um, why do some eBay items get 10 views and other get 150 views? And would it be popular video games, not junk? Uh, so some items get more views than others, probably based off a of picture. So if your pictures suck and somebody else's are great, they're going to click on the great one. So perfect example, I was listing a Sony CD player. And I, this is a perfect example because I already have a story for this. I was listing a Sony Psych CD player today on eBay. You guys can see my listing. It is a Sony Psych D, oh my gosh, I can't remember the model number, D23TW or something like that. I can't remember. But it's a Sony Psych. And I was selling the CD player on eBay. I was listing it for 30 bucks. And uh, the only other one against me that was lower priced than me had a horrendous photo. It was half of the CD player zoomed in and blurry. So I said, okay, I can price above this dude because I'm going to show mine perfectly. And that guy probably is not going to get as many clicks as mine based off of the photo. Uh, that's not always the case, but I just... That's, I see that a lot. Uh, it's, it's usually based off of, you know, photos. Uh, price also has something to do with it, but um, photos make a big difference in how many views you're going to get. Um, let's see what else we got going on. Liquidation says, Liquidation OH actually says, do you ever use FBA items to fulfill your eBay sales? Cross-posting. Uh, no, I personally don't do that, but I've had items that... I sold on Amazon FBA or eBay that I cannot find for the life of me. And I have no idea because everything is in one little room and all of a sudden I can't find this item, which makes me think that I might have sold it, you know, months prior. Um, and I've had that happen and I just buy from another eBay or Amazon seller that is priced very low. And I just change my sh uh, shipping address to the other person's address. And I've had that happen a few times, but I do not... Uh, cross post listings really um, because I wouldn't keep up to date with it I just know I wouldn't am I doing Amazon merch and if so do you design your own designs or outsource so I do do Amazon merch I design my own designs and I'm not making a lot of money on there so around Christmas time I was making about a hundred bucks a week which I mean that's pretty good I'm very happy with that but to be completely honest with you guys right now I'm making about 15 to 20 bucks a week um, I don't know what happened. I haven't uploaded a design in a little while, so that could have, you know, made been a factor. But I have lowered the prices. Uh, I've, I've been trying to work with it, trying to tweak my listings that are selling well, adding keywords and doing things like that. But yeah, I, I do all of my own designs, and um, I personally really, I, I love Amazon Merch. It's kind of free money to me because I don't do a lot of work towards it. I love Amazon Merch. I just do. I really do. I think it's a great platform. Uh, do I know if GameStop will have another trade-in deal soon, like the 60% extra deal I got? Yes, they will, and I'm not a spokesperson for GameStop, but I know they will because they've done it numerous times over the past couple years, and I've seen it happen multiple, multiple times. So they will do it again. Who knows when? But when they do do it again, I will try to post a YouTube video. Also, I got a $5 super chat I see up there. Uh, don't know how I got that. I'm so very sorry. Um, maybe I'll actually scroll down and see the person that did it while I ran away. But uh, I'm reading through these comments, so I will definitely shout you out. Thank you for the super chat for sure. I'm going to shout you out soon when I see you. Um, Jeff Smith bought a Note 5 on eBay and the guy lied in description and said he offered an exchange. So I sent it back. He sent the same thing again. eBay refunded my money and I did not have to return the phone. That is... That's pretty interesting. Hey, you got a free phone out of it. Not bad. All right. Justin Pacman says, 
Do I go to the first price that pulls up on app or click into it? And what's the lowest profit worth your time? Okay, so when I'm selling on eBay, this is how I this is how I do it every single time. Uh, so DVDs, I sell a lot of DVDs over on on eBay. So I'm restricted on Amazon. So I get a DVD. I search uh, first. I check the completed listings to see if the item's actually selling. If I see that a few have sold, then I will go get rid of that and see what's listed right now and sort by lowest price. So let's say the most recent ones have sold for fifteen dollars, eight dollars, and twenty dollars, right? So it has a range from eight bucks to twenty bucks. Now I'll sort it by lowest price. Let's say the lowest price person is at like five fifty, and I see this all the time. They'll be priced at five fifty, and the very next person is at twenty bucks. I just tell myself, okay, I'll still buy it and price it just below the twenty dollar person and wait them out. Now, if I sort it by lowest price and I see five fifty, five uh, fifty one, five sixty nine, five ninety nine, then I think to myself, okay. I'm not even gonna bother. A few people got this item because they probably checked the completed listings and they're all price matching to the bottom. And then there's too many listings on there so I don't deal with it. But whenever I pick up an item, I check the completed listings to see what it recently sold for and then I check what uh, are, is listed at the moment. Uh, you always wanna see what's listed at the moment and sort it by lowest price first. Cause then you see how many people are actually priced well below you. And um, it happens a lot of times, guys, trust me. So that's kind of how I do it. All right, so now uh, let's start scrolling. Uh, Kim's Shop Nelson asks if I teach how to sell on Amazon. Um, yeah, on my YouTube channel, which you are watching right now. So yeah, pretty much I do teach sort of. Just watch my videos. I do have a lot of videos, beginner type videos that show. A lot of my videos recently haven't been beginner type videos. A lot of them have been, you know, me going to thrift stores, which I guess are still very informative. And I show you guys what I look for, what I buy, why I don't buy certain things. And um, I do have other videos that are in the works, but those are pretty much what I've been working on because I've been working on clearing out my office and doing other things. So when I'm at a thrift store, I like to do the live ride alongs, which take less of my time but it's also still informative um so that's why you guys have been seeing a lot of a lot more of those videos lately um just because it's it's easier for me to upload those get those things live get them ready to go and um i'm able to continually put out content for you guys so that's pretty much where the state of the channel's at i'm working on the office clearing it out i would love to make a little video corner where i can do actual videos every single day and uh, I'm definitely trying to do videos every single day for real all right uh, without doing Amazon FBA can you sell from home like eBay yeah of course um, I, I could honestly live comfortably on eBay if I listed more right now I couldn't uh, I do not make enough on eBay right now but I have enough inventory to list to where I think I still could so to be completely honest guys you can make a comfortable living at home on eBay, a comfortable living home with Amazon. Now, me personally, I want to travel, so I want to um, do a lot of Amazon FBA because I don't want to have a lot of inventory that I have to ship out. So I personally would like to do more Amazon FBA just for that instance alone. Um, eBay, totally great. I definitely think you can make a full-time income. I know a lot of people that are making a full-time income on eBay, so you could definitely do it. Okay. OGC says, what's my average turnaround time on eBay? It's horrible. It's horrible. And this is why I do Amazon FBA, to be completely honest, guys. I do Amazon FBA more because my turnaround time on eBay is not so great. I have Patagonia, the North Face, at L.L. Bean. Like, I have nice items on my shelf that just aren't moving. I don't know why the prices are fine. They're just not moving. And that makes me upset because I spent $5 on a Patagonia shirt and it's been sitting and to get, be, you know, be transparent. I've had Patagonia items that I spent $5 on about six months ago that have still yet to sell. And I have them priced at $19.99 for a Patagonia nice shirt that I see other 
uh, YouTube resellers selling for 25 bucks. Pictures are fine. Everything's good. Measurements are there. Every list, somebody might just not be looking for the color that I've listed. I mean, I, I, with clothing, it's very tough. It, it's tough. You're going to have items that sit for a while. I have other items that sell fast, but clothing will take a while. I have items in my office that haven't moved in well over a year. I'd say for every 10 items I sell or every 10 items I list, one of them will sell within the first week. That's about it in the first week. Um, so you really have to realize that not everything you list is going to sell. I have items in there that I know should sell. And I've looked at the completed listings and they should be selling, but they're not. I have them all priced, some of them priced almost too low to where I won't even really make a profit with best offer on them. And they're still not moving. There's not really anything you can do besides wait. And that's why I do Amazon FBA because you have this sales rank number that tells you how fast something will sell. And that's kind of what I base things off of. And um, I check the sales history through Camel Camel Camel, which is another website. I do a lot of research and I like that with Amazon. It's very to the point, you know, it, it really can help you out there. Uh, eBay can be a little sketchy, it can be a little different. Uh, but let's keep looking through these comments. Ever ship anything over 70 pounds? Uh, Victor Hurdle asks. So no, I haven't. I was going to ship something that was 120 pounds once. Around 120 pounds. And um, I kept... It, it was with uh, calculated shipping or something like that. And the only two people that asked me if I would ship it to them were out of the country. One was in some island, like Honduras or something, and somebody was somewhere else. I can't really remember. This was a while ago. And um, I went to UPS. I checked shipping costs. I went to USPS, and I checked shipping costs. And I gave them the quotes, and it was too expensive. They didn't want to pay. So those are cases where I will charge shipping just because I don't know what something is worth. So um, it, was a, it was an encyclopedia set that I found for free. So I just grabbed it. I listed it for 50 bucks with calculated shipping. So I, there was no completed listings on it. I just kind of threw it up there for 50 bucks with calculated shipping. And because uh, I had no idea. If it sold, you know, one state over from me, it would have cost like 30 bucks to ship. If it was going across the country, it could have cost $200 to ship. So I just threw calculated shipping on there. And uh, I never ended up selling it. I ended up donating it. Actually, no. Not a single thrift store would actually take the donations, so I threw them out in the trash. I threw them in a trash compactor because not a single thrift store would take encyclopedias. That's what happened. Um, uh, Penny Royal says, I mean, can you sell on Amazon like you would with eBay without doing FBA? Yes, you could sell on Amazon just like you could sell on eBay. Um, it's called Merchant Fulfilled. Yeah, you could list things just like eBay on Amazon. I do it also. I do that as well. All right. What's up, Thrift School? Says TJ Benz. I met you at the Thrift Meetup. I remember that. What up, TJ Benz? Uh, that's also his Instagram name, and he raps. So I would definitely check him out. I haven't checked him out yet, though, but I assume he's good. Uh, if you're the only FBA offer, how much higher than merchants do I usually price? That is honestly a phenomenal question, and I've wanted to dedicate a video to this. And I still will dedicate a video to this, but this is a great question. So if you are the only person selling FBA, everybody else's merchants, how much higher do you price? It really depends on what the item is and what it's going for. So let's say I'm selling a PS4 controller. And this is an item that I generally know sells for about $60 to $65 in store. So let's say there's no FBAers and the merchants are coming in at 40 bucks, then I'll price it right at 65 because that's why I know what it goes for. Now let's say the merchants are coming in at 65, but there's no FBAers and it still sells for only 65 in stores. I don't care. I will still price it at 10 to 15 bucks higher. So I'll price it at 70, 75 bucks. So or 75, 80 bucks. Um, now let's say it's an obscure item. Let's say it's a plush doll. Um, the rank is decent. It sells for merchants or in at like 15 bucks. 
I'll price that thing double. So I'll come in at $30. Usually I come in at $29.99. Just you know, show it a little bit lower. So let's say the merchants are coming in lowest around $15-ish. I'll double them. Now if it's a basic item like a uh, home good that I can tell is only worth like 30, 40 bucks and merchants are coming in at about 30 bucks, then I'll, I'll price it above them five to 10 bucks. I won't go insane and I won't price it at 60, 70 dollars because I know it will never sell. Now some people do that and items do actually end up selling, but it really depends on the item. Um, if it's a plush or a weird toy, I'll usually double the merchants. Uh, if it's low enough, now if the merchants are coming in at 60 bucks, I've seen this a lot of times. Let's say a puzzle is selling for $60. And obviously a puzzle is going to have a hard time selling at $60 if the rank is at like 700000 So I'll sometimes come in at fifty nine ninety nine, dollars undercutting the merchant by a penny um, and wait for it to sell. Or personally, if it has a high rank and somebody is selling a toy at $60, then I'll come in at $40. It really depends on the item. It's super hard to say. That's why I would love to make a full video on this topic. Um, but yeah, I would like to make a full video on the topic. Great question, by the way. What up, Noe Marziz? We got, um, let's see what we got going on. Scrolling down. Sorry, guys. All right, so Drummer gave me that $5 super chat. Thank you, Drummer. He says, for trashing Goodwill Live. Yeah, I was live at Goodwill the other day, and I knocked over the rack, guys. I destroyed it, and uh, it happens. It happens. I knocked over all the sports coats, and it sucked, and that's on my channel, and you guys can watch that live for sure. Um, let's keep going through these over here. Whitney says, how many items do I sell a day on average? How long have I been doing this? I'm a newbie. All right, so I've been doing this for over four years. Today, I sold one item on eBay. Yesterday, I sold two items on eBay. Day before that, zero. The day before that, zero. <laughs> I only have about 200 items listed on eBay. You're not going to sell something every day with, you know, 100, 200 items. Unless you're selling very great items. Now, I have a lot of clothing, a lot of things that have been sitting for a while. They're not moving that fast. So... I have items that just take forever to sell. On Amazon, it's a different thing. So in total, I'm selling much more than that. Amazon, I sell anywhere between four to 12 items a day. It really uh, differ differs. So today, I think I sold five to six items. Yesterday, I sold five to six items. Day before that, maybe one item because I hadn't sent in a shipment in a long time. And that's my fault. Uh, my Amazon sales have been way down. When I start shipping in shipments, there's multiple days in a row where I sell 15 to 20 items a day. And um, am on eBay, one to two. On eBay, I'm lucky if I get three items a day. Very, very lucky. I average between zero and two uh, per day. So that's kind of how eBay is with me. With Amazon, I like to sell around five and more a day. Um, my average selling price on eBay is around $20 to $25. On Amazon, it's between $30 and $50 is my average. So I definitely sell things for more money on Amazon, and I sell things for a little bit less money on eBay, but I'm okay with that because I like to have two streams of income, just in case. Penny Royal 101 says, how did I come up with the name Thrift School? Uh, I was sitting at home one day and I was trying to come up with the name for my YouTube channel because I wanted to create a YouTube channel. And I was like, well, thrifting is what my channel is going to be based about. So I figured if people search thrift or thrifting, they'll come across my channel. And then I said school because I want to teach people things about thrifting. So it just kind of blended together. And I was like, ah, thrift school. I guess that makes sense. And so I did that. And that's it. And that's kind of how I just create channels. I have another channel that I haven't uploaded on in a long time called Arcade Life. It's with me and my girlfriend, and we went to arcades, and we recorded ourselves playing games and stuff like that, and uh, that was just called Arcade Life, because we go to arcades, and it's life. I don't know, and that's just kind of how I come up with things, and uh, it works. People search for it all the time, so I like it. All right, 
uh, how did I get started on Amazon Merch? Um, this other awesome dude, a Johnny, who is Finn's fan on YouTube, I believe. He doesn't really comment too much anymore. He was really big into eBay and Amazon. I think he slowly stopped and he works a regular job now. I don't know 100%. But he called me one night and said, hey, there's this great program, Merch by Amazon, right now. And you should check it out. And he told me everything on the phone one night and I was talking to him and that night I signed up. This was October of 2015, I believe, the year Amazon Merch was announced. And I said, okay, yeah, man, this sounds great. And so I signed up and I started uploading shirts that night. So I didn't have to wait for any, you know, anything. I didn't have to wait to get approved or anything. So I basically just signed up, started uploading shirts that night. And I could definitely be making a lot more than I am now, but I do all the designs myself. I'm not great at Photoshop. I don't focus a lot of time with it. I focus more time on YouTube and Amazon than anything um, because I have bills to pay. And that's what I focus my time on. I still work on merch though. Uh, I really personally need to work on it more than I am. Um, uh, Thrift School and Steve Steph going live same time. I don't know who Steve Steph is to be honest, I'm sorry. Uh, Thrift, thrifty fifty fifty vet says you've been an immense educator for me on shirt brands to bolo for be on the lookout for. Would like to see a consolidated video game bolo video from you. So I actually have a little series that I did that I, I really need to finish. Um, it was video games that sell well, and pretty much I did the original Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, and the Nintendo 64, maybe the GameCube. I don't think I did anything more than that. And I was going every, I was going to do every single game system and the top 10 games. Five games that are worth an insane amount that you probably won't find, but to keep an eye out for. And five games that are common to find that go for a good amount. And I was doing this series, you can find it on my channel, and I thought it was a good series and I went through two websites to show you guys exactly uh, how I found this information, how I'm able to see how fast these items will sell, and you could definitely find them on my channel. Um, I thought it was a good series. They didn't get a lot of views. I don't know why. Um, people are more likely to watch videos of thrifting than to watch very specific content videos, but I would like to continue the video series and create a playlist of it and then I could link to it because I think it's, it's super informative and I was able to really show you guys you know five items that maybe you won't find but are definitely worth good money and then five items that will that you probably will come across but not realize and are worth money uh, I do like that series so I do want to get back into that I started that series about a year ago and then I stopped so Raken Profit was in the house uh, he's probably not here anymore. Yo, yo. He sent me a $2 super chat. Thank you, Rake and Profit. And he said, you the man. Smash that like button. Thrift Battle future guest. Yes. So hopefully I'm on Thrift Battle, which Steve Rakin, Bonafide Hustler, just hosted tonight with Rally Roots and College Picker. And they were doing some crazy stuff, guys. I will win no matter what because I got you guys to back me. But I know for a fact I will win Thrift Battle. I find some insane stuff and uh, I, I find better stuff than every other reseller out there I mean I'm not gonna lie I do oh I know right Kristen's over here going oh you shouldn't be saying that uh -uh. I'm talking shit no I'm not talking shit but I, I find some amazing stuff out there guys and uh, I definitely I get a little cocky but I do think I would win thrift battle I'm not even I'm not even slightly worried that I would lose all right let's see what's going on um John and Pam are asking, have I ever had any problems filming in a thrift store? Yeah. Okay, well, not in a thrift store. Just the other day, I was filming with Kristen, and we were going walking around Petco, and the dude told me to stop filming. I was doing, like, a, a vlog style, plus I was going to Goodwill and all these things. I haven't uploaded that video yet. I, I'm way behind on videos. I haven't uploaded that video yet, but we're walking around Petco, and they told me to stop filming to further... I'm not allowed to film the pets for their confidentiality. Do you remember that? The fish? Yeah, I couldn't film the fish. I was like, what are you, are you joking right now? And so I just shut off my camera and that was weird. Uh, in thrift stores, I've never had an issue. And uh, the thrift store, can you turn that on please? 
in in the thrift store that I go to near me all the time, they um, watch my YouTube channel. Kristen, you gotta turn that down, please. I'm sorry. So it's loud. it's actually a lot of people are talking about. It. All right. So um, yeah, no, that I really don't um, ever have an issue in thrift stores. I really don't. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, John Lane says Patagonia isn't moving for me either. Yeah, no, it, it's it's been kind of weird lately. Nightwing is saying that's crazy. I sell mine 24 plus shipping and they go pretty fast. I think it all depends on the style, color, and material. Yeah, it definitely depends. I mean, I felt like organic cotton Patagonias would sell well. Mine just are not moving. That's just, you know, it happens. Um, True Web Deals also sent me a $2 super chat. Thank you, True Web Deals deals it means a lot if you guys want to send me more super chats shout you out i'll say whatever you want me to say actually don't post swears and cry. I, no, i'll probably say them i don't care i'll say whatever you want me to say you post a super chat and i pretty much say anything right sure you heard that you heard that from the best <laughs> um what else do we have Nightwing saying, every month I reduce the price of an item by 5% till it sells. Once it's $10, I donate it. Personally, I don't do that because I've had items that sit a year and then sell for 75 bucks. So sometimes you're just waiting for that right buyer. That's just how I do it. Um, Noam says, do I price my video games that you saw on eBay for lowest, middle, or top like pricing? I usually go between low and mid, sometimes mid. Um, I always price lowest, so I will um, type in Mario Kart Wii, and let I actually have a Mario Kart for the Wii disc only, and I will sort by lowest price, and I'll go until I see it, and let's say one selling for twelve ninety nine, and the next one is at fourteen ninety nine. I know it's a fast selling game, so I'll price it at fourteen ninety eight. Uh, so technically, I'm not the lowest. Uh, I just know the other guy's trying to undercut by so many dollars. I'd rather wait and make the extra dollars because mine will still sell the same day. Now, let's say it's a video game where the lowest person is at twelve ninety nine and the next person is at thirteen fifty. I'll price mine at twelve ninety eight. That's just kind of how I do it to get rid of it, and uh, that's that's just how I work with video games. Um, Seymour says, "How do I test vintage Polaroid cameras? I do not ever test them, and I sell them as untested." Hello, baby. I don't know. You're such a good girl. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't test my Polaroid cameras. Edward Jackson says he loves Trump. All right. Um, Miss Noam says hi. New sub here. Like your channel. You better. <laughs> no, thank you very much. All right. Uh, Miss Noam also says, I think I'm saying that right, uh, no name, no name, Miss No Name, that's what it is, uh, is this my full-time job and how much do I make, if I may ask, um, so this is my full-time job, I made more money last year or two years ago than I made this year, which is sad, uh, mainly because I moved to this lovely home that I'm living in now and I got very lazy and I'm not lazy anymore, I've been working my butt off very regularly now um last year i can't i can't remember exactly what i made i believe profit was around sixty thousand. around uh this year was definitely less with what well, 2017 was definitely less which kind of sounds horrible um but it wasn't it wasn't bad i'm perfectly fine my rent is not that expensive um, I, I think I made like $50,000 profit this year, uh, in 2017 around there, some, somewhere like that. Um, so I'm not making a killing, but, uh, I'm definitely going to be making much more this year. I can already tell the way sales are going. I've been working much harder. I honestly took like a three to four month break last year. I would have easily made way more than 50, I would have made closer to like $80,000 if I just freaking sat down and focused, but I didn't. Uh, this year is going to be closer to, I, I can already guarantee it, I'm telling myself it's gonna be closer to that $100,000 profit mark. Um, I just have a, a decent feeling 
that I will be selling a lot more. Um, I'm going to be traveling a lot more. I am going to Florida next month, or this month, at the end of this month. I'm sure not a lot of you know that. I haven't made an announcement yet, but I'm going to Florida at the end of this month. I'll be there. Hopefully I go, I run into Gerson Estrada. Sorry, who's part of Thrifty World. He, on Facebook, I, that's like the only reselling group I'm part of. I love Gerson. Uh, hopefully I can meet up with College Picker. Hopefully I can meet up with Rally Roots, um, Rockstar Flipper. I'm going to try and get in contact with all of those people and uh, see if I can hang out with them and upload videos with them because I'm never in Florida. Last time I was in Florida was freaking 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. However old I was, I was like 12. Um, so I haven't been to Florida in a long time. Um, I would love to go back. I'm going to be driving there this month with my girlfriend. So we're going to North Carolina. Then we're going to Florida. I want to go to Key West. And um, there's a cop. And um, yeah, and I'd love to go to New Orleans and Austin, Texas. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit the other two, but for sure... We're gonna. There's a lot of cops out here. There's probably a killing, a shooting, because I live in the ghetto. No, I don't. I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh, so let's keep scrolling. Um, John and Pam says, I tried Amazon and paid more in fees than I was charging. Yeah, sometimes the fees can be crazy. You just have to know which items to put on Amazon versus which to put on eBay. Um, what do we got going on right now? Blake Turner asks, if I've ever tried Bonanza... No, I've tried Etsy, never sold anything, but I've never tried Bonanza. Uh, Kobe Jones Kobe asks, what kind of clothes sell best for me? Um, on eBay, I sell a good amount of Peter Millar. I sell a good amount of... I don't really know. Peter Millar is probably like my best seller. The second best would probably be L.L. Bean. Third best would be Tommy Bahama. Fourth best would be... I'm trying to think of a brand. Just like sports attire would probably be fourth best. All right. Uh, Ron Jeremy is asking if I wax or pluck my b-hole. Uh, I don't do either. But thank you for the question. I really enjoyed that. Rob F. is asking, I remember those vids. They were good. Yeah. Kobe is saying, WTF, Ron. <laughs> I know, right? C. Moore is asking, has anybody purchased and sold Pyrex test tubes? Purchased 60 old new stock for $4.95. Any suggestions on how to price these bad boys? So I've never sold those, but I've sold lots of Pyrex. Believe it or not, I sell Pyrex on Amazon. There are listings on Amazon for Pyrex, and I've actually sold lots of pyrex on amazon it's kind of insane um people think ebay is the place to go for old glassware but i sell a very good amount on amazon i i usually try to sell things on amazon before i can on ebay and for some reason guys this is weird i can sell clothing used on amazon um i want to make a video on this because i don't think anybody else can sell clothing used on amazon that i've heard of i can uh, I've never sold clothing used on Amazon because I don't have any clothes used clothing to sell on Amazon, but um, I can, which is weird. Don't know why that's the case. Um, let's see what we got going on. Thanks, True Web Deals. What up, homie? Uh, Seymour is asking. He has some Sony broken electronics. Do you sell those as parts? Yeah, sell them as parts over on eBay. Uh, Penny Royal says, what takes more work, listing or editing videos for YouTube? To be completely honest, guys, editing videos for YouTube takes forever. That's why I've been doing a lot of live videos because editing videos for YouTube takes an insane amount of time. I give all the props in the world to Ryan Roots over at the Rally Roots channel. He edits high quality videos daily. I couldn't do that, guys. I would have a mental breakdown. I'm not good at budgeting my time like that, and he's so good at it. And um, I have a hard time editing videos, guys. They can take upwards of two hours for one 10-minute video to edit. And um, 
to edit, process, and upload. It's just insane to me. And, um, yeah, that's a pain in the butt, man. It's a pain in the butt. For what you get out of return, that's... Two hours doesn't seem like a lot, but what you get in return for YouTube videos... I mean, I have some YouTube videos that have maybe 10 bucks. And I'm working two hours to make $10. Doesn't sound bad. That's $5 an hour. But then to do that daily is just... That's a lot of work. Man, that's a lot of work. And um, filming. You're not even including the filming in between. It could be like six hours, right? Six hours of your day, you're filming in between. You take your memory card out, you plug it into the computer, you wait for it to upload, you put it into, and then you edit for a couple hours, then you wait for it to process, upload it, come up with the keywords. It takes a while. So editing on YouTube is um, is insane. But I, I do wanna get back to doing like big videos. John Lane is asking how the big death pile of CDs, movies, and games is coming. So I just listed about four more today. <laughs> That's how it's coming. I I very rarely list them. I have so many to list, and uh, that's definitely a goal of mine within the next two weeks before I go on this trip. I want to list a couple hundred because I am having a hard time listing them, guys. It is so monotonous to list, you know, DVD after DVD after DVD. It doesn't take a long time. You can list, you know, ten in an hour, but. It is monotonous, man. It is freaking monotonous. Uh, do I ever source from stores like TJ Maxx? Yes, I do. Uh, hopefully, I can meet up with Casey. I'd love to meet up with Casey, the rock star flipper. Penny Royal is saying, come to California, do a meetup. I've never been to California. I'd love to go to California. Closest I've been is Arizona. I was there for a week over the summer. Um, thank you, Yash Jalim. Jalim, I will... Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Picking profits in the house. Uh, set long-term goals and short-term goals. Write them down and read them daily. Plan each day in advance. So, I am not organized enough to do that. And it's it, like I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I almost don't care enough to do that. I I really really wish I did. I'm not saying like oh I don't care. I just don't have enough attention span to care about sitting down and writing stuff out. I feel like an idiot whenever I sit down and write stuff out. And um, I mean, a lot of people get a lot of stuff done that way. I have a hard time uh, planning out my day for eBay and Amazon. I just, I, I, I sit there, I'm like, what am I writing down? And it just never comes to fruition. So that's always an iffy spot for me. I, I would love to do it. I just can't get through that mental blockade right now. Uh, eventually in the future, I hope I do. All right. Uh, I switched to Poshmark because eBay and fees were killing me. Any thoughts? eBay fees are super low, to be honest, compared to Amazon and other platforms. So if eBay fees are killing you, I'd highly recommend getting items that just sell for more money. Um, what's going on with eBay and PayPal? I don't know. I mean, I do know, but I don't know enough to talk about it. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube. Don't forget Nat Nast or Robert Graham. I sell those very frequently. I just don't find a lot of them lately. Is IZOD a good brand to sell? No. Have I sold P90X Extreme Home Fitness set with Fitness Guide? Yes, I do. Sell them all the time. Just picked one up. They sell very fast. The DVD set by itself should sell for 30 bucks. Should sell within a couple days. Have I ever sold fur? I have not. Um, Joe says he can't sell Orvis, it's so it sells slower. Yeah, Orvis is a slow mover for me as well. Um, it's just a slow mover, I'm sorry. But it, it, I buy it, and I don't know why I buy it as often as I do, because it takes forever to move, guys. It really does. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. I am signing out, heading out for the night, guys, just under an hour. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I gave you guys a lot of information. I mean, I really tried to pack as much information. I'm pretty much an open book when it comes to this stuff. Uh, you ask me questions and I answer them pretty much to a T. I don't try to hide anything from you guys. Uh, be sure to hit that like button. We only got 26 likes in here. I'd like to get much more than that. Time to get that drink on. Yeah, I've been drinking uh, a little bit of a uh, vodka and diet Coke. And, uh, Tastes great. 
But we are going to play some Fortnite. It's on my TV right over here. And uh, you guys can see it right there. There's my Fortnite ready to go. So I'm level 65, right about to level up. There's my girl. There's my gamer tag. Follow me on PlayStation if you want to. But for now, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. This is Thrift School, signing out.